people and welcome to Vlogtober day 13 where I'm challenging myself to sew for one hour every day and bringing you along for the journey. How do you like my new hair? I decided to go blonde and get extensions. I just couldn't deal with that shortcut that I did last week. Just kidding. This is a wig. <laughs> um, yesterday when I was pulling out all my Halloween decorations, if you saw yesterday's video, I decorated for Halloween. Um, when I was going through all the Halloween decorations, I found the bin of all of the costumes that I've made over the years. Well, it's just all of my costumes. Some of them are homemade, some of them are not. There's not too, too many because I like to reuse Halloween costumes. Like I'll wear the same Halloween costume for like three years in a row. But anyways, some of them I have actually made from like regular sewing patterns. And so I thought I would show you all of the costumes that I've made over the years and maybe give you some Halloween inspiration in case you are looking for a Halloween costume and maybe you have the same pattern in your stash or maybe not. Um, but anyways, yeah. So let me show you my Halloween costumes. I'm gonna actually take this downstairs, I think, so that I can put them on hangers and you can actually see, uh, kind of see it better. So this is my Princess Peach costume. I made this, I think in 2015. I remember it was the first Halloween after we'd gotten married. So Halloween 2015, I did wear it for a couple years. And let me tell you about it. I have to say it is, it barely fits. Guys, it's like real tight here, <laughs> real tight. I use this pattern here for it. This is Butterick 5748. You may be familiar with it. This pattern has been around for a very long time. And uh, yeah, I made basically this dress here. It's pretty simple, it's full skirt, bust art, waist art. It is sleeveless, but um, I looked online back then, sorry, they're a little wrinkly. And I found um, some tutorial for like a puff sleeve like maybe a puff sleeve that you can add onto any dress. I don't really remember. But anyway, somehow I managed to make myself little puff sleeves to add to it. This pattern I think is really good for Halloween. Well, it's really good for any time because it is a pretty basic shape and you can customize it a lot. Um, but it's really good for those like full skirt, vintage styles, princess styles, anything like that. It's like a really good basic pattern for that. I also sewed this tool into the waistband because I think her dress is kind of like this. And I put a darker pink trim around the bottom. And I also made a little um, tool underskirt, which is now kind of crushed, but it was a little underskirt to make it a little puffier. And I bought these gloves. So for her crown, I got these foam sheets uh, at Michael's, the ones with the sticky back. And I did two layers and then cut out kind of a crown shape. And then I got these jewels uh, at Michael's as well and glued those on. And then for her earrings, I took the same jewels, glued them to an earring back, the ones that you can buy at the craft store, and painted it with nail polish, which I also used to paint the brooch that I got at Goodwill, just a cheap fake costume jewelry brooch painted um with the same nail polish and then and yeah and then this wig and that was the uh and that was the princess peach look so so yeah this is um back when i wore my skirts a lot shorter too <laughs> so yeah oh and i also made her little uh wand as well save me okay now this costume I actually did not make for Halloween I made for a Renaissance fair in I think 20 maybe 2017 yeah 2017 I think and the skirt and the corset bodice are made from sheets and curtains that I got at Goodwill and then I did buy the fabric for the top and I made it out of this pattern here the simplicity Renaissance uh, 3809. I think I made this version here and I think I did make it so you can tie up the skirt, but I don't have it tied up right now. And then I made this little flower crown to go with it from flowers, fake flowers from, um, the Dollar Tree. And I really like how it came out. It's not historically accurate in any way, shape, or form, but it did the job for the Renaissance Fair, and I ended up wearing it two years in a row, I think. Yeah, I wore it two years in a row to the Renaissance Fair, and I love it. So this outfit was not a costume, but I made it for a 
beer festival where the theme was to dress up in some sort of like crazy Halloween pumpkin theme. And so I made this top and I made a matching shirt for my husband. Um, and we wore this to the beer festival in 20, I think 17, 2017. We didn't win any, any prizes, but I still think it's pretty cute. I even have this matching headband here. Um, I just got this quilting cotton from Joanne. I used two patterns. I used, obviously two patterns. I used the classic McCall's um, 6696 for the shirt dress. And then for my husband's shirt, I'm used this McCall's 6044. So these were the two patterns for this costume or outfit, I guess. And sometimes I like to wear it around Halloween or like on Halloween during the day, like daytime. So those are my three Halloween costume slash outfits that I have sewn for myself over the years. I have made myself other Halloween costumes and outfits, but they weren't as sewing heavy. They were more just like cobbled together, hot glued, cut up, tied together, things like that. These are the most, heavy on the actual sewing ones that I've actually used patterns for and so actually sewn. I hope you enjoyed this little costume fashion show. Maybe it gave you a few ideas for Halloween for yourself. And now we need to get to my hour of sewing because it's already getting dark. It's kind of late. As you can tell, the, light in, the lighting in here is going. So it's time for sewing. All right, so we are continuing to work on the Peppermint Magazine peplum top that I will be making my Halloween top out of. And so yesterday I left off, I pinned the neck binding to the neckline. And so now I need to sew it. Then I need to sew the peplum. And then I think we should be ready to see how it fits. So one hour on the clock and ready, set, go. Okay, we have a finished Peppermint Magazine Peplum Top Muslin. So I didn't film much of the actual sewing that I did today just because we're gonna be sewing this top twice and sewing a muslin's kind of boring. So I don't want you guys to get too bored with my channel. I cut off the hem so I could see the length. I did one armhole binding. I did the neckband binding, but I'm gonna need to go back and look at that again because I didn't quite get it this time around. And uh, yeah, it's the gathers are a mess, but um, I think we'll be able to try it on and see how it fits. So I'm gonna leave you guys with a little bit of a cliffhanger for today. I'm not gonna try on this muslin until tomorrow morning. So you'll have to tune in tomorrow to see how it fits and if there's any modifications we need to make for the final version. That's it for today's Vlogtober. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll tune in tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.